In my previous video I talked about villagers and villains, a simple fun card game about the town development, which I enjoy very much. And now the game has an expansion called City Builder, the next step when your town turns into a city. And there may still be monsters in it, there may still be dragons, but it is now a city, a blooming city. Now, um, the expansion is still on Kickstarter, I don't think it will be there for long, so this is a prototype, but to me it looks pretty much like the finished product. In this expansion you get some tokens, some colored tokens, you get some cards that will go to the players. These are sort of like, not exactly cards, but little player aids. There is a summary of the player aids to tell you the phases of a turn, but then also you have an area where you place the start marker, the king favors market if you use it, and city tokens, which are these ones here. There are two per player. Now, I said this looks like a finished product, but there is something uh, that it looks a little unfinished and maybe it will be different in the final edition, in the final version of the game, which is the colors of these these uh, player aids that each player gets and that should be matched with the color tokens are a little off. For example, this color here is somewhere between blue and purple. Um, doesn't look exactly the same as as you have here. And there are the colors that also look a little off, a little different. So especially this color here, which to me is orange, and it should go here. Uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe it's not as off as I immediately thought of when I first played the game. But maybe they could be a little closer to one another. What's important then is that you do have these uh, player aids here, whose main role on top of helping you playing the game with all the information that they have, um, have the role of matching the players with the tokens so that at all times you know exactly who has which colors. I am the purple player, you're the blue player, so we know who's who. But the heart of the game really is formed by these cards here, which are the city development cards. At the beginning of the game you agree on some that will be used in the game or you can select them randomly. The rules are saying that you should start with a number of cards equal to the number of players, but I found that with a with a low number of players, uh, say two players, it's not all that fun. It's more fun to have more cards than there are players, simply because that will give more options to the players. And I'll explain later what that means when we see how these cards work. Suppose that we have six cards out there, maybe with six players, I suppose, or maybe simply because we decided to play with more cards than allowed. Haha, <laughs> but who's going to say anything? What happens here? You play the game normally. The main difference is now, during the hire and build phase, which is the development phase, you can also choose to buy an upgrade from one of these cards. As you can see, each card has a nice illustration and a name, of course, and then you have a space for upgrades. That means during the development phase, you can place one of your tokens on one of the boxes here, pay the corresponding amount of gold and now you have the advantage described on the card. Here both boxes cost the same one gold, the same is not true in other cards, so that the first player that gets an upgrade probably will want to go for the cheaper one. You even have cards where the first player to get that upgrade gets it for free and the second has to pay for it. But as you can see there is a limited number of players they can get a certain upgrade. This upgrade uh, has reached its maximum capacity, no one else can buy it. Which is pretty much why I think it's fun to have more cards and upgrades available than you have players, because the this way, if you add two players and only these two upgrades, then trust me, most likely both players will want both upgrades, it just becomes a matter of who gets it first. But if you have multiple upgrades, then you will have a player that has Bureau, Public Image, and another one has Currency Exchange, another player has the Currency Exchange, and the Warriors Hall, Elite Militia and apartment housing. I like the fact that 
players can customize their cities a little bit. It's super simple. You buy the upgrades by placing your token there and then you simply gain the benefit of the upgrade whenever it is that the benefit applies. Some may apply to the final scoring and the benefit in this case allows you to increase the town value of a card in your town by one, I mean to one. Add one to all of your town roll defenses, gain one additional town value that would be victory point for each four gold that you have. Usually gold doesn't score anything in the standard game, but it does if you have this upgrade here. Car counts as building cards or citizen cards. You have really a lot of these. The art is still the nice pleasant art so that you have in the standard game. Now we just more options and more ways of increasing and increasing your your abilities improving your city turn your little village in a city with some interesting stuff going on so basically this is what this expansion is about i'm just going through the cards actually if you then want to stop the image and look at the text you'll be able to do so you don't need me to read every card for you this is basically the expansion. You do have a sheet here of rules telling you how to play with the new components. Here you have the part that I just described. And here you have the rules variations. Some pretty interesting, some a little underwhelming. I, when I saw that this expansion could be played cooperative, I was super excited, but the cooperative version uh, well, there are a couple of rules that make playing, make playing the game a little harder. For example, the challenges are defeated when you exceed their defense number, not when you match it or exceed it. But other than that, uh, the basic core idea is you play in a big team, all players play together cooperatively, um, and at the end of the game, you count the points, and the total, the total score is... The total score so basically you simply play score adding together all of the scores of all players and then you play a game trying to beat your previous score it's a little underwhelming when the cooperative option is like that of course it would have been to me more interesting if there had been a real challenge to get to the end of the game if the challenges were much tougher i don't know how that could be designed but games where you have the cooperative option and that is uh, play uh, against an AI and win or lose are to me much more interesting than uh, cooperative games in which the idea is simply play against your previous score. Some of those are perfectly fine but it's not my favorite way of playing a cooperative game if the option is available. Sister Cities which is team play, again there are a couple of rules and variations but the main idea is playing teams. Theme Builder instead of shuffling the deck starts uh, started to represent the theme so you find the theme and then you put together the cards that will represent the theme house rules variations of that kind but really when you are purchasing the city builder what matters is these cards even these player rates uh, they are fine but i think that if instead of having two tokens you simply have three one in front of each player to indicate the color one of each card that would be perfectly fine so it seems to me an expansion which is nice, but if the expansion was just this, a Ziploc bag with a sheet of rules telling you how to use these, I think that would be perfectly fine. This way you could also simply add the expansion to the previous box. Again, you don't have the conundrum of what the heck am I going to do with the box of the expansion, which looks nice and sturdy. I feel guilty throwing it away, but I feel also guilty keeping on the shelf on the shelf empty and I feel silly bringing two boxes to a game night when one would suffice the dilemma of the expansion box is right there staring at you in the face city builder an expansion for villagers and villains nothing wrong with it it's just that I believe there's more stuff than you really need the idea that you find here is nice and fun and, and cute with the new cute art. Uh, I like the options that are opened by this expansion. Some other is something a little overproduced about it, which may seem silly when you have a game this small. Uh, when we think of overproduced, we think of Hero Quest and games like that. But I don't know, I think could the same result could have been achieved with less effort and less 
investment of resources from the publisher and the player but players but if you like villagers and villains this is a nice addition i don't think it's a complete must though because the original version is fun and entertaining enough this is not one of those expansions that fixes a main problem that you have before it does add more variety to gameplay and that is always welcome so uh it's not a bad expansion by any means i would say it's a good expansion not one that i desperately felt that i needed one that is an excellent one that reinvents gameplay entirely it's good it's a good expansion city builder a good expansion for villagers and villains